Welcome back, kids. <clears throat> we are uh, about to start the next part of the notes, number 54. We're going to talk about significant figures. Significant figures are not difficult, but significant figures are, they require a little practice, all right? Uh, when we measure stuff in chemistry, it's important to know that some of our measurements are more accurate than others. They have more places, more decimals. We're more sure of them. And there's going to be rules around uh, how well we can use our tools, how many digits or, or decimal places we're allowed to have. And then when we use our measurements in calculations, like in a density uh, calculation, where density equals mass over volume, you're going to measure your mass to a certain exactness and your volume to a certain exactness. And your answer is going to have to have that same level of exactness. Just because your calculator pops out 11 decimals, that doesn't mean that's the correct answer. You can't possibly know how, uh, how your answer could be that good if you didn't measure it that well. So significant figures, there's six or seven rules. They're all very easy. The problem is there's six or seven rules and you got to keep track of them. So we're here in the notes at number 54 and let's see what we got. We're going to go through all of these rules nice and slow. Number 54. This first measurement might come off of, the, of, a, of a scale in lab. You might weigh something and it might weigh 127.25 grams. Now, rule number one is if it's a digit that's not zero and you measured it on a scale, they're all significant. Every single one of those numbers is significant. They're important. They're part of the measurement. They're not to be overlooked or rounded away. If you have a scale that measures to this level of accuracy, like they do at Wegmans when you go to the deli or like in chem lab, those numbers are all important. And we'd need to write them all down and we need to use them all in a calculation. In number 55, there's a zero in there. Maybe you measure 107.25 grams. You put something else on the, on the scale and that's what comes up. Now, in this case, there's also five significant figures because one of the rules about zeros is if you have a zero in the middle, it's not just like you could omit it. If you took that zero out, you'd have a different number, 17.25. The zero is not a placeholder. The zero means there's no tens. So if the zero is between significant figures, it's also significant. Now, number 56, that's different. This is what I call the leading zero, zero point. That actually is a placeholder. You're not, you're not counting that. The first digit there is the six tenths. There's six tenths and two hundredths and five thousandths, or 625 thousandths we're going to disregard that zero in the front. It's not significant. So that only has three significant figures. 57 is tricky. Honestly, what, what can I say? Let's look at 57 and 58. They're both tricky. There's two different measurements, 100 point grams or 100 meters. Now in, in measurement theory, in chemistry, when we measure things, we have to be careful what we say because 100 point grams is a fairly accurate measurement, whereas 100 meters without the decimal point, that's kind of casual. There's less sort of guarantee that it's exact and there's less significant figures. So with 100 point grams, because there is a decimal point at the end that you can see, because with 100 meters, you know the decimal is there, we just didn't write it in. We didn't write it in in this case because we didn't measure it that accurately. It's kind of about 100 meters. But with 100 point grams, you're saying you're sure you measured it that well. There is going to be three significant figures because of the decimal point. The zero in the ones column is significant and the zero in the tens is now between significant figures. So that's kind of a tricky significant figure rule. Now with 100 meters, there's no decimal point that you can see. We know it's there, but it's not written and it's not necessarily measured that accurately. 
So that last zero is not significant. And that means the zero in the middle is not between significant figures. We're only sure of that measurement to one significant figure. So that's actually a fairly weak measurement. Now, if you measure something very, very carefully, if you measure a hundred meter dash with a laser and use time and figure out how fast light goes and you're absolutely sure, then you should measure that to a more accurate level. You wouldn't say, eh, a hundred meters, who cares? No, you do care. If you go to a lot of trouble to measure it and you're, you're sure to say 100.000 meters, that's a very accurate measurement because there's many significant figures. In this case, number 58, 100 meters, eh, one significant figure. With 59, we're gonna use numbers like this quite a bit. We're gonna talk about gajillions of atoms and gajillions of molecules, and we need to use what's called scientific notation. We only worry about the coefficient, the number in the front, the 2.245. In that case, it's actually fairly easy. There's four significant figures. We don't have to look at the times 10 to the exponent. That, that part's not significant. Those are, in fact, placeholders. We are sure about the first numbers. Now, if the numbers in the front were any other number, we would follow the rules above if there were zeros. If the zeros are between significant figures, they're significant. If the zeros are at the, at the front, we don't, write our, um, we don't write our complex numbers like that. We would always have the, the coefficient between one and uh, less than 10. So there would be a decimal, um, but same rules as above, but only to the coefficient. Now, 60, oh, another place to put a zero at the end of a decimal. This is different than 58. 58, you just have zeros at the end but this is at the end after a decimal. And with this number, 14.50 grams, the one, the four, and the five are all significant. But this zero is at the end after a decimal, which means you measured that there are five tenths and there are no hundredths of a gram. So this would count for four significant figures. Now, the last one, there's, there's crazy exceptions all the time. The last one, if you measured, this is different, if you measured the density of water to be one gram per ml, that's actually perfect, right? That is the density. But if you didn't measure it, if you want to use a number like this in a mathematical problem that you know the density of water is this, or if you were to use in a, uh, a mathematical problem a conversion factor that 12 inches equals one foot, those are equal to what we call the nth degree. They have unlimited significant figures. Since the density of water is a given of 1.000 grams per, per ml, by definition, it's actually 1.000, as many O's as you like, as many zeros. And that last one will be the end of a decimal and all the others will be between significant figures. So this would have unlimited significant figures, unless you happen to measure it. And then it would only have three significant figures. So Sometimes you have to really discern, did you measure it or is it a fact jack? Because if it's just a fact, if it's the truth, it's not a measurement, it would be an accepted equality. The density of water equals 1.000000 grams per ml and as many zeros as you like. If you only write 0 0.00, that's not just three significant figures unless you just measured that. If you measured that, I will measure the density of water in, in a lab. If you measure the density of water to be that, it has three significant figures. But if you just write it down because you know it, that, that's what's called unlimited significant figures. Now, truthfully, this is easy. I got this down pat. I, I never make any mistakes on significant figures. It's so easy. They're annoying. They are very annoying. You're gonna be annoyed by this. We're gonna do a lot of practices, even handouts to do a lot of practice. I thought the other day when I was biking that maybe I'd even make a PowerPoint so you could just keep practicing. All you have to do is practice. If you don't practice, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. The rules are easy, but there's six different rules, seven different rules. I don't even know how many rules there are. These zeros are here, they're there, they're in the middle, they're at the end, they're at the end of a decimal, there's a decimal point or not a decimal point. They're in a coefficient, a pain in the neck. Significant figures are, look, right here. Pain in the neck. 
They're not hard. You can do this. You have to do this. Let's practice a whole bunch of these, okay? So this first one, 200 point grams of MG. MG is another element, it's number 12. You could look it up, see if you can figure out what that is while we're fooling around here. 200 point, the zero right before the decimal point is significant. The middle zero is between significant figures. You would write in the box 3SF for significant figures. Is this, are these numbers significant? Are we gonna use them in a calculation? Because we need to make sure we know how many significant figures are in our measurements, because when we use our measurements, the answer is going to be limited to the least number of significant figures that you started with. And in this case, there's three significant figures. Let's go right across. I'm going to get my, my pen out and I'll pick a new color for us so we can feel like I'm really paying attention. Here we do brown. All right. This next one. 35.66 grams is CU. I see you. Do you see me? Right? This is a weird thing through the Zoom. I see you. Do you see me? I'm just kidding. Obviously, I can't see you. You know that, right? I can't see you. This, this is a tape, right? I'm now. You're some other time. We're, we're in, it's like a space-time twilight zone. 35.66. That's going to have a total of four significant figures. There's no zeros. All the digits count. 100 centimeters. Eh, no decimal point. That means, eh, it's 100. Eh, not so much. We're not so sure. Just one significant figure. Now, this next one happens to be millimeters. They're smaller, but the, the unit doesn't matter. 100 point. The point right after that makes the last zero significant, and that makes the one in the middle between significant. So we get a, a three here. Look at this. Look at that. I'm getting better at this pen. Uh oh, look at all these numbers. See this number, 4,005,033 atoms? You probably could swallow that like a pill. Atoms are really small, can't even see them. They're unbelievably small. You need millions of them just to, to taste, taste them if you could taste them. The rule here is we got zeros in between significant figures. So as it turns out, all of these numbers, all seven of them are gonna be significant figures. The OO in the front, they're both between significant figures and the second of the third O there, uh, the third zero is in between significant figures. This one here, we have a leading zero here. Leading zeros don't count. Right, point five five two. Only the numbers after. Then we got a big temperature. I don't remember what the temperature of this is. This might be the, I don't know, the melting point for aluminum. I don't know. I don't remember what it is, but I know that it has four significant figures because there's no zeros. In this next temperature, which is remarkably hot. Oh no, I'm sorry. That's not a comma. It's a little small for me. Ten point five five two. That zero is in between significant figures, so they're all significant. Look at this. So look at my shirt today. Can you see that? I wear this shirt periodically. It's kind of like a joke. I like this shirt. It's a different shirt than the other videos, right? I shaved. My life is so different today. Your life is so different. I'm stalling. I'm letting you catch up. Listen to me. Significant figures are important. It's a pain in the neck. You're gonna hate them, right? You, hate, you gotta know them. There's not a lot of rules. There's seven, six or seven rules, mostly about zeros. Zeros don't really mean anything to anybody. They mean something to us. We gotta keep track of the zeros. Here we go. 23.00552. You know what kind of thermometer you need to take a temperature like that? Like a magic thermometer. I don't even know if thermometers can take a temperature that accurately. I mean, what difference does it really make to anybody? I don't know. But if you have a number like that, that's a temperature, it's a measurement, then you have to figure out how many significant figures you have. And it looks like seven, all seven of those digits are significant because the zeros are between significant figures. Now, this next number actually has a name. I'm gonna put a little star in this box so you guys can remember this. This is important. The name of this number, we're gonna see if you'll remember it for me, okay? Avogadro's number. Avogadro was an Italian chemist 
who actually looked at gases and they named this number after him. He didn't count this high. If you wanted to count this high, I don't know, I think I figured it out once. If you counted one number per second and never stopped to go to the bathroom, never stopped to sleep, never stopped to eat one number per second, it would take you like, I don't know, 97,000 years. I mean, you couldn't do it. This number is gigantic, but it comes up in chemistry all the time. Avogadro's number, very important. But you'll memorize it, this number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's a great number, but don't worry about it for now. Only look at the coefficient, right? Only look at the coefficient because the powers of 10 don't matter. This has three numbers of significance unless, unless you're using it in a math problem to do a conversion and you, you didn't measure it, you would know that this is unlimited. So this could be three if you counted them, which you couldn't, or it would be UN, not the United Nations, which is a really cool place to go if you ever go to New York. I've been there, I went there last summer with my son. I've been there a couple of times. It's a really fun place to go to see how the world can really hopefully work together. Unlimited, not United Nations, unlimited significant figures. This next one looks like it's the density of water. Again, this is a thinking kind of a thing. If you measured it, there's three significant figures, right? Three, I'm gonna put this one in parentheses because it would be unlimited if you were talking about, I know that the density of water is this. So if you measured it, there's three significant figures. But if you're using it as the density of water equals this as an equality, then it would be what's called equal to what they say is the nth degree. That means you could have 1.0000 to the nth degree, not to the thousandth or 10,000th or millionth place, you know, to the whatever place you want. You can have that last and that last zero after the decimal that's going to be significant. This next one, look at this again. This is either going to be four, oh my gosh, you got to do all this writing, or it could be unlimited, right? If you're talking about the density of water and you just want to use more significant figures in your math to show you just hit an extra zero, it doesn't matter, it's, it's an equivalency. If you measured it, four significant figures. If you know it, then it's unlimited. And look at this one, I can't even see how many zeros that are there. There's one, two, three, four, I can't count them, it's too small. Well, this again is gonna be however many numbers it is, and I really can't count. One, two, it's gonna be six. Or if you're just gonna use this because you know it's the density of water and you just happen to feel like writing it out, fancy, <clears throat> it could have unlimited. You could measure it to this level. This is unbelievable measurement for normal chemistry, but if you measured something like that, it would have six significant figures unless you just knew it and you didn't measure it. That's the difference. You don't have to measure with the ruler how many inches are in a foot. You just know that 12 inches equals a foot. Here, if you measured it, six significant figures. If you know that it's the density of water to just as many zeros as you feel like it, it's unlimited. Now this next one's really cool because there's a lot of zeros in the front and they're so small I can't see them. I can't see them, they're too small. Doesn't matter. There's only one significant figure here because all those zeros are in the front. They're called leading zeros. This number could actually be written as five times 10 to the negative seventh, it looks like. I can't really see the zeros for real. I don't mean to joke. My eyes are poor. I don't hear too well. I'm breaking down, I'm getting old. My birthday's in November. I'm gonna be even older on November 4th. You might wanna write that down too. Did you know that November 4th, which happens to be my birthday, is also National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day? Just saying, chocolate chip cookies are my favorite. This next one, 3.550 times 10 to the negative 17th grams. This is an unbearably small value. 10 to the negative 17th is just a gigantically small decimal. But in this case, we're only looking at the coefficient. It's gonna be four significant figures. Doesn't matter what the powers of 10 are. Now, in math problems, there's rules. There's rules for the math and you have to make sure you follow them. If your measurement is 125 grams divided by 35 mLs, 
you basically have three significant figures divided by two significant figures. Your answer will be limited to just two significant figures. Doesn't matter what this is the density of, but if you get your calculator and you type in 125 divided by 35, whatever the calculator says, you must round your answer to just two significant figures. And that's not gonna be very accurate. It's not even gonna be a very good measure. You know why? 35 mLs, it's not a very good measure. If you want a really good density, you gotta do really good mass and volume calculation, the, the, the measurement, you gotta measure them really well. You don't measure them well, you can't have a really good answer. Your calculator thinks you're doing math. You have to realize you're doing measurement math, which is a little different, is rules. Not just, not just math, not just calculation. You have to pay attention to what it is. Now, density, here we have four significant figures in the mass and only two significant figures. Don't get fooled in that volume because there's no decimal. So here again, no matter what the calculator says, two significant figures in this particular answer. Now, when we convert Kelvin into centigrade, we know the formula, of course, I'll squeeze it in if I can, because it's not too hard. K equals C plus 273. Now, we didn't measure this 273. This is, this is the truth, right? We know that this is the accepted value. So there's unlimited significant figures. The 24.5 has three significant figures. So when we plug this in and we say that K is going to equal 24.5, this is hard to write with the mouse. You have no idea. I do have that pen thing at home, but I haven't mastered it and I haven't brought it to school. 273. Now this is going to give you 297.5, I'm gonna squeeze over here. 297.5K. When I add those two up, that's the wrong answer. That's the math answer, that's not the right answer. We're adding three significant figures to unlimited. Our answer can only have three significant figures. So we would have to round this to 298K. Now, is that perfectly accurate? Mm, it's as accurate as we're allowed to get according to the rules. Now, if you would like to be more accurate, you gotta do some better measuring. Your temperature in centigrade only has three significant figures. You can't have four significant figures unless you measure better. You need a better thermometer. But if that's the thermometer you have and that's the best measurement you have, you have to round to three significant figures. That's as close as you can get, okay? This next one, it looks like uh, just a math calculation, part of a density probably, density problem. You have two significant figures times five significant figures. Doesn't matter what the calculator says, whatever you get the calculator, you're gonna to have to round it to two significant figures because your first measurement there, 2.5 centimeters cubed, that's a weak measurement. You only have two significant figures. That means your answer can only have two significant figures. All right, this one here, 454 grams equals one pound. See that fancy little symbol in the middle? One of my favorite symbols in the world. It's called the equal sign. This is that. When, when units are equal to each other, they have unlimited significant figures. Unlimited, completely unlimited. You can make it 454.0 equals 1.005 pounds. You can have as many zeros as you want. So they, they have unlimited significant figures. So to do this math problem, you would have to take three, seven, five oh grams. I'm gonna put this over one to help you see it. And I'm gonna multiply it by a conversion factor. Now, you might not really understand this math yet. We're gonna to get to this. It's called dimensional analysis or unit conversion. This is the next video coming up, how to do this kind of stuff. And uh, you'll get really good at it. But to do this, I would just put here one pound on the top 
And on the bottom, I would put 454 grams. Now, I can do that, and I'm going to explain to you why I can do that, because with the units, one pound equals 454 grams. One over 454 is a very small fraction, but one pound over 454 grams, because they're equal, it equals one. So one pound over 454 grams is actually like multiplying this by one, uh, by one, and it's going to be the same. And what happens here is we're going to cancel these grams here, and we're going to cancel these grams here. And once we do the fraction math, the answer is going to come out in just pounds. I'm not going to do the math. It's going to be like five point something, but it has to have four significant figures because this is 3.750. So we're going to have four significant figures. Four. I think on the next slide, I have the answer. So you don't have to kind of worry about what that math is going to turn into because we'll be able to see it in a minute. Now, in this equality, 1,000 grams is a kilogram. 1,000 of anything is a kilo of anything. If you had Charlie's, I'm Charlie. 1,000 Charlie's is a kilo Charlie. That's a weird thing to say. 1,000 grams is a kilogram. 1,000 meters is a kilometer or kilometer. Um, 1,000 milliliters, um, no, that's a different one. That's not, that's milli. Let's think. Grams and, and meters works the best. Grams, kilograms. There's inequality. This is going to have unlimited significant figures, unlimited. And this last one has just four significant figures. So I'm going to clear my drawings. We're going to go to the next slide and look at that. I didn't give you the answer on the bottom, but you can use your calculator. You just have to round it to the correct number of significant figures. The truth is, this is not that hard. The truth is, you know, it hurts a little. You have to practice. This slide, you should practice again. There's a handout I gave you that has like 35 of these questions. And the answers are on the website, arbuso.com. So <clears throat> you have to be able to figure out how many significant figures are in a measurement because once you get these measurements, you do calculations, you have to figure out how to round your answer. We're getting up to that, how do you round the answer. Well, it's based upon the number of significant figures in the math. It looks like we have just a few more problems on this next page and we'll get to them. You measure the density of nickel metal to have the density of 9.1 grams per centimeter cube. What is your percent error with the correct number of significant figures? And here's another thing. I'm not going to have to say that anymore. It always has to have the correct number of significant figures. Significant figures are significant. That means you're going to do them all the time. Okay. So you measure the density of nickel have a, a density of, of 9.1. What is your percent error? Remember how to do that? I'm going to show you this first one because it's a little easy. You write the percent error formula in red. Percent error is me measured value minus actual over actual times 100%. You measured 9.1. Where the heck did this 8.9 come from? Who, rem who remembers where the 8.9 came from? Table S. Look it up. Nickel, number 28 on the periodic table. I can't see my shirt, but I, there's a periodic table right here. 9.1 minus 8.90 equals, divided by 8.90 equals times 100% equals some giant number on the calculator, right? Positive number, it's got to be positive because your measure is over the actual, but you must round it to just two significant figures. Does not matter what your, your uh, calculator says. Two significant figures. If you want a better measurement of your percent error, you should have done a better measurement of your measured density. Your measured, your measured density limits how good your answer is going to be. And in this case, we're down to two significant figures. All right. The density of nickel, you looked that up. You didn't measure it. Unlimited significant figures. So we're limited to just two significant figures. So, oh, forget this slide. I don't even know what the heck we're going to do. Here we go. Every year, 
we have that slow exam, right? We have to measure how much chemistry you know, which is practically zero. And then at the end of the year, we give you the regents and we see how much progress you've made. Basically, the school gets to see how much progress I've made. And since you know practically no chemistry and you don't lie or cheat on this test, you just do your best. Um, then at the regents, after I've spent the whole year talking to you and helping you, you actually do pretty well in the regents. And the difference is how well did I do my job? It has nothing to do with you. It's all uh, big aggregate data to see if I did my job. Um, last year, we didn't have a regents. Um, this year, I'm not sure if we're gonna have a regents. So far, we're kind of gonna have a regents is the plan, but it doesn't make sense that we are. It doesn't seem like we're gonna have uh, enough time in school to get all the labs done or enough time in school to learn all the material. I don't know what's happening, but we certainly are not taking a slow test. Nobody's talked about that. So let's, let's be happy. You measure a floor. Now this is not really chemistry. This is significant figure math. You measure a floor to be what? 14 point something. I can't read that. 14.5 times 15 feet. You want a rug. So you got to do the area. You remember area? Oh, I got to get my pen back. Area, of course, equals, I'm going to pick a different color just to show you I'm on this. Area equals length times width. You do this calculation. I'll be back in like 10 seconds. You do the calculation and round it to the correct number of significant figures. You can do this. You got this. Keep doing it. I'm on my way back. You almost there. 14.5 times 15. I'm going to get my calculator so I can show you along. 14.5 times 15. Uh-oh. I get 217.5. And I got to have a good unit here. What do we got? Feet squared. Feet squared. Sometimes people say square feet. It doesn't matter. So you go to the rug store and tell uh, the rug person, hey, I need a rug 217.5 square feet. Eh, that's too fancy a measurement. You're only short of how many significant figures? You got three significant figures times two significant figures. So your answer can only have two significant figures. So you're going to have to round this to 220. 220 feet squared. with two significant figures, two San Francisco. So you guys ever been to San Francisco? San Francisco is a really cool place. I like San Francisco, it's having a lot of problems now. There's a lot of fires out in California, a lot of combustion, putting a lot of ash in the air. It's very hard to breathe. It's making pretty sunsets, but it's really unhealthy and dangerous. Good friend of mine lives right near there. He's thinking about moving back to New York because it's really that scary. His house burned down once several years ago this last fire, it almost burned down and now he doesn't know what's going on. He's not been home for a couple of days because the, the power has been out. Two San Francisco's, two significant figures. All right, let's clear this, clear all drawings, get rid of that and let's see what we got. Look at that, 220 square feet. I, I used a different unit, I wrote square feet out instead of feet squared, but either way. You want a more better, and more better. Listen to me talk, where am I from? You want a better answer? You gotta use more significant figures in your mathematics, in your measurements, so that you can have them in your mathematics. 65, you measure a bar of metal to be 74.35 grams. That looks like four significant figures. That's a pretty good measurement. You do its volume and you get three significant figures. What is the density of this metal? So we'll do this really quick. We're gonna write the formula. Always write a formula. Formula is my middle name. Annotate with the pen. Where is that pen? Oh, it's here. Density equals mass over volume. And in this problem, we have equals 74. Get your calculators out after you write this. 74. 
grams over 12 mLs, 12.0. And you know what? I'm changing it just for fun to centimeters cubed. Remember we said that an mL and a centimeter cubed is the same thing? Equals, I like them equal signs, clear. 74.35 divided by 12.0 equals, uh-oh, look at this crazy number, 6.1958. Gotta keep looking. And then it looks like we got a lot of threes. Three, three, I'll squeeze another one in here. Three and three. That's like to the millionth place. We only measured three significant figures in the volume. So our answer has to change to three significant figures. So we have to keep the first two numbers, 6.1. And now we have to decide, what are we doing with this nine? Are we keeping it or do we have to round it up? We have to look at the five. If it's five or more, we have to round it up. That means that nine, really has got to become a 10. So the answer is going to be 6.20 grams per centimeter cubed. So this was tricky. Not only was it three significant figures, but you had to round it up and kind of cope with that stress. You're going to get it. It takes a little practice. It does. It takes practice. Look at that, 6.20, oh look, in this case I use the mLs. mLs and centimeter cubed are interchangeable. Doesn't matter what you do, either are, either are correct. All right, <clears throat> 12 inches equals a foot. That's an equality to equal to the nth degree. How many inches are in Oh my gosh, 8,375 feet. That's like a mile and a half. All right, I'm gonna do it my way. And you may not know how to do this, but really, however you do it, the most important thing is just to get the right number of significant figures. I'm gonna put this 8,375 feet. That's our starting point. What's our starting point? What do we wanna convert over one? So I get those feet units up in the top in the numerator. And now using this equality, I can make an, a conversion factor out of it. Conversion factor is when you have an equality, you put one on top or the other on the top and the other on the bottom. Since feet are already in the numerator, I'm gonna say if I have one foot in the denominator and I put 12 inches in the numerator, I can do this. The feet in the numerator divide by feet in the denominator, they disappear, and my answer is gonna come out in inches. And so this just becomes a straight out multiplication problem. It's eight, three, seven, five times 12. Now on my calculator, this is a pretty cool number, one, oh, oh, five, oh, oh. inches, 100,500 inches. Now, sometime in the past, I must've figured this out because that's a really cool number and it's gonna make you crazy with significant figures. Four significant figures in the original measure and unlimited, unlimited in the in conversion factor. So how are we gonna round this number? Well, how many significant figures does it have? The one and the five are significant, the two in the middle are significant, and these two at the end, as long as there's no decimal, that's fine. Four significant figures actually popped out right. You gotta, you gotta check your calculator to make sure you get things correct. Let me clear these drawings. We'll go ahead. Oh my gosh. You'll learn how to control this a little better. There we go. It's all good. We already have four significant figures. Look at that, the math is perfect. It popped out with the correct number, four significant figures. 12 inches over a foot is an equality. It's not a measurement, it's an equality. They have unlimited 
they do not limit your answer. Your answer is limited to the least number of significant figures, which is four. All right. <clears throat> How many significant figures are in these measurements? This first one is the density of a gas. It's a very small number. All those zeros in the front are leading decimals, so they don't count, but the ones in the, in the back do, the number numbers in the back do. So that's gonna be three. This is a melting point of, a, of probably of a metal, it's a very high temperature. The zero at the end, there's no decimal, also has three significant figures. This is a different melting point. On the bottom here, 303 Kelvin. The three and the three are both significant and the zero in the middle between significant figures, it's significant. This boiling point, 3560 point Kelvin, decimal that's written, different than decimal in your head, right? Decimal that's written. This 7180 up here, you know there's a decimal point in your mind right after that zero. But because it's not written, we're not really sure that you measured it accurately enough, so it only has three significant figures. This one though, <clears throat> the written decimal says, I'm sure to four significant figure places. That's a much better measurement right there. And this one here is no decimal point. You know it's in your head, it's there, 640 point, right? But there's no point. So you don't get to count that. It's only got two significant figures. All right, and there we go. Let's see if we can jump ahead. Look at that. Significant figures. Oh, at the end of the notes, there's no more slides. Significant figures, honestly, of all the things that I get to take points off, and all the I hate to take points off. This is, I just taught this to you. You gotta practice it. You gotta learn from your mistakes. But honestly, <clears throat> some kids are not gonna learn this. They're just, eh, who cares? They're insignificant. That's wrong. They're significant figures. That's why they have that name. You have to learn how to, how to keep track of them. And then once you have them, you got to use them in your math correctly. You got to limit your answer to the least number of significant figures. When you measure with tools in the chem lab, thermometers, you have to round to the, you have to measure to the nearest place that you can. If your thermometer has individual units of temperature, degrees, you can estimate out one place. So if it's between 22 and 23 centigrade, is it more like 22.3 or 22.5 or 22.9? You have to kind of estimate out one place, one place. Your eyes are not good enough to see more than that. If you want a better measurement, you gotta buy a more expensive thermometer with more lines on it. You can measure one extra place. On the scales, the scales are digital, literally digital, they give you, they give you the numbers. There's no estimating on that. But on, on machines like a thermometer or the scale that I weighed myself on the other day that has individual pounds, you could, if you could, measure to the nearest tenth, but you could never measure to the hundreds or the thousandth with just your eyes. You can't see it that well. If you want to know something to that level of exact measurement, you need to buy a better scale that's more accurate to more significant figures. All right. What should you be doing with your life? Hopefully you're watching these Zooms and you're watching me now. Hello, I'm Charlie Abuso, I'll be your chemistry teacher. Hopefully you're reading the basics. Hopefully you're doing some of the homeworks. The homework answers are on the website. So you do the homework and then you check it. Don't just copy the answers, that's silly. I'm not even collecting this homework. This homework is really just like practice, more practice for you. It doesn't matter if you get them right or you don't get them right, it only matters to you. So you should do the homework and check your answers. There's a handout on significant figures called Significant Figure Practice Handout. The answers are online. I gave you the handout on paper. Do the practice. There's like 30 of them, 35 of them. Do them all, check them, and then when we meet during a, a live Zoom or a live class, you can say, hey, Mr. Abuso, I don't understand why this one is this and, and that one is that. And then I can help you specifically, all right? Some of you've got this. Put it in your pocket and you own it, all right? It's easy. Honestly, it is easy. But there's rules. It takes practice, right? I'm watching the Tour de France on TV. I love bicycling. These are the best bicyclers in the world. They can ride 35 miles an hour, packed all together, 
But every once in a while, somebody makes a little oops. Everybody makes a little oops once in a while, and then a whole bunch of them fall down. They all get back up and they ride. I don't know where they get their courage, honestly. You're going to make mistakes. It's easy to ride a bicycle. It's very easy. Most of you can ride a bicycle. None of you can ride in the Tour de France. I imagine myself riding down Main Street, 17C. I drive out to a Wego and I get to these hills and I'm like, get up that hill, pedal, 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 pedal. And I imagine myself in the Tour de France. I can't ride in the Tour de France. You know how you get to the Tour de France? First of all, you got to be young and I'm not really young, but you got to practice, practice, practice some more and then practice some more. You want to be good at this? It's easy. Just like riding a bike is easy, but to be really good at it, it's going to take some practice. Stop fooling around. Turn off your phones. Pay attention. Do some work. Be good. Do what your parents tell you to do. Do what I tell you to do, right? And then have fun. School first, fun second, all right? Good luck with yourself. I'm having a good time. I can't wait. Today is Friday. It's almost lunchtime. I can't wait for you to get some of you in here on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday. And those of you who are never coming in, my son's not going to high school either. He's going to stay home too. I will talk to you specifically alone on Friday. How cool is that? All right. Over and out, kids. Now I'm just going to try to figure out how to turn this baby off. We're done.